Hi, welcome to Gen Z Finance. I'm an older Gen Z here on YouTube documenting my financial journey. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about the concept of the wish list and wish farms, specifically what it is and how to utilize it and some tips for how you can implement it in your budget. We are gonna be focusing mostly on how to use it within YNAB, which stands for You Need a Budget, which is a specific budgeting software system. In fact, they are the creators of this idea, or at least to my knowledge, they are. However, you can implement this idea regardless of the budgeting system or philosophy that you use. So we're gonna jump right into it first by going over a definition. So this is from YNAB. A wish farm is a way to plant virtual seeds that will blossom into just about anything your heart desires. I love that quote and that is really the essence of a wish list. The other way I like to think about wish lists is that it is a way to become your own personal Santa Claus. The first step of a wish list, you literally write out a list of specific things or experiences that you want. You can do it on paper first or you can do it right in YNAB itself. I recommend you start with concrete things and you can think about this with things that you need and things that you just want. Maybe you need new blinds for your apartment or your house. Maybe you want season tickets to your favorite sports team's upcoming season. You can also think about far off projects you don't necessarily need to save for yet, but want to keep in mind for the future. So you might want to write down that vacation idea or bucket list trip that you want to get to sometime in the next five to 10 years and you're just not sure when yet. Step two for the wish list is to do some research and estimate a dollar amount or cost for each of the items that you wrote down. Now you don't have to do a lot of research at this stage, just get a guesstimate of what the cost is going to be. Here's an example of a wish list. I just want to clarify this is a hypothetical wish list. You can see I have on here things like new blinds, a new cat tower, a bucket list vacation trip to South Korea, and then I have small things like a French press or a fancy dress for a date night. Step three of the wish list is to organize and prioritize. Here are some questions to help you with this. Do you have any hard dates that you need to keep in mind for any wishes? Maybe you know that tickets to the next season's games start to go on sale in three months. And that's going to help you prioritize which come first on your wish list. Other questions, which ones excite you the most and which ones are less fun but maybe more vital or necessary? Finally, YNAB recommends categorizing wishes by cost. They usually break it up into three groups, small, medium, and large wishes. It's totally up to you how you define those ranges. In this example, you can see I'm saying small wishes are going to be $50 to $150 and large anything over $300. But this is going to depend on your income. For you, maybe everything under $500 is a small wish and everything over $1,500 is large. So keeping these questions in mind, we're going to refer back to the original wish list and write some of these things out. So if we look down at the bottom, you can see the new blinds wish list I've written next to it. It's urgent because it needs to happen before Thanksgiving. I'm considering it necessary for my personal life and I don't consider this fun. You can compare that to the kitchen reno wish list item, which I've stated is large because it's $1,500. It's not urgent or necessary, but this item excites me and I consider it fun. So the wish list is where you recognize and write down all of the desires that you want your money to provide for you. The wish farm is where you take your wishes and grow them into reality. So step four is to select one to three items from your wish list to actively work on funding. You decide what to focus on. Traditionally, YNAB would recommend selecting one small, one medium, and one large wish. I personally like using other criteria to decide on the order because I don't find it very fulfilling to fund based on solely just the cost of the item. I don't think that helps me really recognize what my priorities are. If you're someone who likes to laser focus on one thing, you can definitely focus on one specific item at a time, but I do think three is a good maximum number to keep in your wish farm at any given time. So looking back at the example, you can see I have selected three items to sit in my wish farm. I'll even give you some insight into how I selected these three. Both the new blinds and the tailoring are urgent, necessary, and they're not necessarily fun to save for or fun to spend money on. 
So then I tried to balance out those two not very fun items by putting in the lightning tickets. So this is an example of why I don't necessarily love the one small, one large, and one medium template or recommendation from YNAB because the lightning tickets are large, but I wanted to put them here because they're going to be fun to save for. And they are urgent in that there's a hard date that if I want to go to the next season's games, I need this money by, in this case, May. Once you fully fund a wish, you can move another wish list item up to the farm so that you still have three active wishes that you can contribute to. So here's an example. You can see in this case, we have fully funded the dress suit tailoring at $150. So I have gone ahead and moved up the standing desk that was in the wish list up to the wish farm. Step five is to once you have saved up the money that you need for an item, you're gonna wanna make sure that you spend the money from a main category. So in order to keep your YNAB reports concise and helpful, you don't want to enter the transaction in the wish farm line item that you use to save up for it. Ask yourself what is the umbrella or general category already in your budget that this specific item would fall under. For the example of the dress suit tailoring, I would suggest do you have a clothing line item maybe in your sinking funds or true expenses. A good quote to remember this is to save in the specific and spend from the general. Step six is to retire your wins in a separate group. I like to title this group wishes granted. Once you have purchased the specific item that you were saving for, check off completed wishes with literally, I like to use the check mark emoji and drag them to a wishes granted category. This allows you to quickly pull up a list of all the specific items that you have saved for and actually were able to purchase. So because you're going to be tracking and entering your transactions in more general umbrella categories, it might be hard to remember all of the wishes and money wins that you had because those transactions are going to be all throughout your budget. So if you keep the line item that you saved the money for and you moved it up under wishes granted, you can quickly access this at any time. So now we're gonna see an example of this. So I am going to my checking account to enter a transaction. This is gonna be for the dress suit tailoring. So the payee will be a tailor and the category I'm going to select under my true expenses, clothing. I will put the memo here as dress suit fitting slash tailoring. You can even leave a note here to say this is a specific wish farm item. The outflow is $150. So if we look at my budget, you can see I'm currently overspent in the clothing category because the money that I've budgeted for it is up in that wish farm. So I'm gonna cover the overspending with the $150 in the wish farm item. That fixes my overspending and now that dress suit tailoring is at zero. I can go ahead and mark this as complete and then I can create a wishes granted master group and I can drag that completed wish item up into that wishes granted and that would be the entire process. So here is an overview of the six steps for your wish list. It's going to take you the most time when you are creating your first wish list in YNAB or on paper, but once you have your first list out, you're only going to be adding one or two items to your wish list as you think about them or as they come up. You're not necessarily going to go through steps one through three in real detail after you complete the original setup. Now, I wanted to talk about step three again, which is organizing and prioritizing your wish list because for me, it's the most vital step. So let's explore more ideas or ways to help you categorize and prioritize your wishes. You can think about the cost, like we talked about before, the urgency and timeline, and the relation of that urgency and timeline to the cost. If you're saving up for a grand vacation to Bora Bora and you think that's gonna cost you $6,000, that $6,000, depending on your income, you're not gonna be able to save for that vacation in just a couple of months. It might take half a year, a year, a year plus, and so you really need to think about the relation of the cost and your timeline. You're also gonna wanna think about the necessity, and there might be different levels of necessity. So you don't want to just separate your needs from your wants. You also kind of want to rank the needs based on how important they are and the wants based on how much you actually want them. And then you can also categorize them based on the amount of thought and research you've dedicated and how long you've been thinking about it. So one of my big tips is to use emojis or letters to help you organize all of these different types of characteristics of the wishes. So the traditional YNAB way to categorize your wishes is again, small, medium, and large, and they actually recommend that you put an S, M, or L depending on the price range that that item falls into. I actually really like to use emojis 
And here are just some examples of some emojis you could use. I use this soon emoji to represent items that are a bit more urgent or that have an upcoming deadline approaching that's a hard date. Then you can use either the SOS emoji or the little yellow triangle with an exclamation point. I think that's a cautionary emoji to represent something that is a necessity, that is a need. And you can use that to differentiate between something that you find fun or something that excites you. And for those categories, you could use the emoji that says cool, you could use the sunglass guy, or you can use a thumbs up. If you have an item that you just thought of for the first time, or you know it's much more long off in the future, you could use a little thought bubble to represent that this is just a thought for now. And then finally, the end emoji to represent something that is a low priority to you, something that you don't need anytime soon. And you could even use the yawning emoji to represent a item that compared to other wishes on your list, it actually kind of bores you or it doesn't excite you as much. You do not have to use these emojis. You could use a color scheme or you could use any of these shapes to help organize. Again, maybe the small, medium, large is more than enough. That's really all you care about. Referring back to the example wish list that we created, here's what it would look like if we used some of these emojis to help prioritize them. Let's say I just completed something in my wish farm and I'm looking down at my wish list and I'm trying to decide what I will fund next. These emojis would help me prioritize and decide. I would look first for anything that has a soon emoji at the beginning and then look at necessities before wants and then maybe even use the red exclamation points to designate priorities to decide between two categories that are both urgent and necessary. So for example, I would pick the dress suit tailoring over the new blinds because there is a priority emoji with the dress suit tailoring and not with the blinds. The last thing we're gonna do is take a look into my real wish farm and wish list, which you would get glimpses of in my budget with me's. I have a template for all of my line items. As mentioned, I use emojis reflecting priorities of the wish at the beginning of each line item. Then I have the name of the specific item I'm saving for. Then I have the guesstimate of the cost. I also include the month and year that I added the item to the wish list. So this is completely optional. You don't have to have this information in here at all, or you could perhaps put the month and year that in the notes section for the category. I decided to include it in the line item and I like this because it tells me how long I have been thinking about this item and how long it's been sitting and waiting. So things in my wish farm that have a check mark means that I have fully funded that category, but I just have not purchased or moved the money out of the wish farm and into the specific transaction line item yet. And then looking at my wishes granted, the template I have there is the name of the item, the transaction category that I actually purchased the item from. So for both my MacBook Pro and my iPhone 11, I made the transaction out of my electronics category. And then I include the date purchased and the final cost. And then I keep my wish list and wish granted groups hidden at all times, except when moving items around. All right, that is going to wrap up this video. Let me know down in the comments, do you already have a wish list? If so, what's currently in your Farm that you're focusing on? How do you prioritize your wishes? I'd really like to hear from other people. And if you don't have a wish list, will you implement the idea now or in the future? Don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well. As always, I hope y'all are staying safe and healthy and that you have a good day.